All right, Comic Book School. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be looking at some of the software tools that are available to you as a creator to help you guide your story from concept to creation. Today we'll be looking at Milanote, a software package that I discovered while looking for a different way to do mind mapping. Mind mapping is the way that you can creatively draw out and visualize what you're going to do with your story. And I was looking for something that would be powerful yet flexible and allow me the ability to tell a better story. Um, I stumbled upon Milanote, which um, I was kind of intrigued by. And I was checking out all the different ways that ostensibly it could be used. And I saw, okay, there's a mind mapping feature. Um, I was able to sign up as just about anybody else can, uh, sign up for free. And I want to share with you how I used Milanote to tell a better story. So let me just take you to the home page of the app. You're able to download an app, which is essentially running a Chrome browser, but it is also a full app, which you can open up without a browser. It's very, very interesting, and I really like the interface of it. Um, the way it works is you drag boards onto a palette. I've already dragged a board so that you can see exactly how this works. In this case, I'm working on an actual comic book idea called Unmade Men. So you'll note here that there's 13 boards in one card. The reason that this is important is because the free version limits you to a number of notes and cards that you can use. And I'll give you a little bit more on that later. So we go into Unmade Men. First thing I did was I dragged a board and then I built what was inside the board. Now. Uh, I've taken all of my characters and I've built them out into this visual mind map, which makes sense to me. I'll explain it to you in a minute. But essentially the way you build these is by dragging a, an icon onto the palette, and then each one of these are highly customizable. And I'll show you what that looks like. But first I started with the three main characters, which you'll see here on the bottom. Uh, Frankie the Moose, Angelo the Chimp, and Louis the Badger. So I had my main characters uh, just for context, they are wannabe criminals, uh, they want to be mobsters, and they want to be tough guys. Uh, but they are not. Unfortunately for them, they are none of the above. Um, but I just thought, let's visualize the characters as well. Uh, Milano gave me the opportunity to change the icons. All of the icons that you see here are customized. The way you would do it is essentially you would drag something on here and this would essentially be a new board, which is a palette for being able to create a character. But I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Just delete this so you can see it. So I wanted to talk about the relationships that the characters have. So you can see here the two lines, which I've made bold, uh, gives you some customization. If I were to click on the line, it allows me to customize and label. Uh, these were dashed lines. These meant these were thinner relationships or people who didn't have a pre-existing relationship. The thinner lines meant that the uh, relationship was not as strong to the story. So I felt like, let me show the dark ones as part of the story. But I, I left this one here. One of the things I'd like to be able to do is change the color of these lines. So if I am showing criminals uh, or characters that are going to be criminals, I want to show the color. So the color of all of these will be significant. You can see it's a little twitchy sometimes, but you get used to it and you start to build out. Now those are the criminal activities and then this one was blue because I wanted to show a tenuous line, but I also wanted to show that in this case, this character was good, right? The police officer is good. Uh, in this case, you know, we have very iconic characters. So we have the three main characters, Frankie the Moose, Angelo the Chimp, and Louis the Badger. You have Grizz the Bodyguard, as you can see, has a thick red line to Frankie the Moose and a thick red line to Panda. And then Mad Dog Mazzini has a line to Grizz the Bodyguard. Now Mad Dog uh, also has a dashed line from Frankie the Moose. Now in the story, Frankie wants to impress Mad Dog. That's why that relationship is there, but it's not built yet, so it's a dashed line. And then you have Panda, uh, who has two short lines to Tiger and Bunny, who are not related to any of the other characters. That's on purpose. Now I've made this map, and one of the great things about making this map was it also 
forced me to be able to do some character analysis. You'll notice here, it's like a path. So from home to unmade men to Lewis the Badger. So I'm writing in a template that was provided. I'll show you what that template looks like in a minute. So I had to write out the profile of the character. Most of this here is prompted for me. And as I noted, they also have pre-designed templates that you can populate that allow you to um, fill things out. Um, and sometimes if you need to move uh, items around the page, it's really very easy. You could just drag and drop. I'm not doing a good job here. There you go. And you can move and rebuild the page. It's super intuitive. Now, some of the things that were a little less intuitive as I was working on this, I didn't realize that this was the navigation. I couldn't figure out how to get back. Here it is, you get back. Now, as you can see, I don't have any cards for Angelo. So what I might do here is you see this pop up here and I would go into the writing tab and then I would say character profile. Now it builds one automatically. That's the one that you just saw. And I'm gonna keep this example content and I'm gonna use this template. Now my workspace is full. I'm going to have to remove some items from this, but what I'm going to do is just go back so you can get a sense of what's happening with these characters. Now I've added two cards and one file. So like I said, you know, you're in here and you now have to delete a few things. And what that does is it takes some of the elements out of the project and then it allows you to continue working. Now it's almost full. So you can see the way the system works. And if you refer somebody else, you get additional boards, but the free platform is still rather robust. I was able to outline my entire story. So for each one of these characters, I can go and build a profile. So as you can see, I did it with Grizz, the bodyguard. And I purposely kept imagery out of here and dock attachments out of here to reduce the size because I am still using the free version. Go back to the main. Now you'll notice that there's this planning section here. Now this planning section is really interesting because I was able to add a series of other types of content assets. So as you can see, I've just color coded it and changed all the icons. This is all customizable. You don't have to do any of these with icons, but as you can see, I like design, I like colors. It really helps me uh, to drive forward. Now I look at my story outline and I use the template and the premise, the stakes, the core conflict, the resolution, the lesson, these were all already built here. And there was example copy written in here that helped guide me. Um, I decided that I would use colors because they were blank. It's a very flexible platform. So this is green, everything is good. Uh, orange means that things are starting to go bad and then red means things are just going completely downhill for the main characters, I should say. So that was a story outline. This is something I thought was super cool. Um, I love a good visual map. Um, I've always used the Robert McKee method of a story arc uh, from the book Story. If you haven't read it, it is a super resource. Um, but what it did was this gave me this great visualization and then different prompts that including it, it, I've actually just used the headlines they use, background, conflict, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. And then there were some sample um, arrows and call out boxes. Um, right here, I decided, oh, I'm going to add this. And I was able to then add a bit of, uh, so I'm gonna go safe steel here, right? I just decided, okay, I'm gonna change the title of that. Boom, it's that e easy. I'm gonna have say happens over two days. I'm gonna say happens over three day weekend. Boom, like that, and it's done, right? And what this does is gives me an ability to visualize in a number of different ways. Um, you'll see here that there are some sample pieces of content that I've also dropped in here that are not yet filled out. Let me show you what they are. So uh, this is a novel template inspiration, a title, your research, a brainstorming, your mood board, if you've never used a mood board before. Uh, it's a lot of fun and what it does is it shows you a way to organize your imagery in a way that helps you to get into the mood. Uh, here's the structure and here is maybe the uh, book cover. Now, obviously we can use the same type of structure for a graphic novel. So I just changed it from novel to graphic novel. 
Uh, furthermore, I like this brainstorming element where now you can reorganize the story in different ways. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to put my characters here and how they interact, what the situation is, what those themes are, the setting. So what this has done for me is it has prompted me to continue to build out what I realized that I hadn't built out. It was a trigger for me that, yes, I know what story I want to t tell, but maybe I haven't thought about all of the different elements that I need to in order to tell the story in an effective and powerful way. And that's really where I wanted to go with this. Now, it also has this little area where when you drag a board over, you can drag one of these over. So I was looking and I was like, you know what, let me see, I'm gonna drag a to-do list. Now you'll notice this to-do list is just blank show to-do list, which I'm doing right here, but I can also now add it to this block. Now I can also decouple it. If I wanted to, I can say, you know what, I'm gonna just take the story outline, I'm gonna put it over here. Now, the cool thing about this is I'm able to move this around anywhere that I want to, um, but then if I put it into this area here, which is called a column, I can now take another column and I can put this in here and now these are able to move around together and I can say, okay, I'm gonna put the, the, the story frameworks here and I'm gonna put frameworks here, whatever I felt like doing. So here's my to-do list. I don't need this particular to-do list anymore and I'm just gonna delete. Sometimes it's a little kludgy when I wanna show you something, it's a little hard to click and delete something. That's one of the areas which I'm not crazy about. It's obviously it's a great piece of software that allows you to do so much, um, but sometimes it's a little, uh, a little unpredictable. Then again, it is essentially running through a Chrome browser. And when you realize just how much you're able to do with this, it is incredible. Now, the great thing is, is you can also add commentary. So I can say, check this out. And then I can send this to one of my partners. I'm not going to actually send this to one of my partners because I don't want to reveal their email address, but I can send this to one of my partners. Now, who are my partners? My partners are some of the people that I've actually sent this to because I'd like to collaborate together with this platform because it is really helpful for me because I need to see everything. Now, if you recall, and I'll pull this up in uh, post-production, uh, I had drawn this on a whiteboard, which was very, very helpful to me because I was able to see all those connections. But then after a while, if I needed to move things around, I was running out of space and also it was a whiteboard. So for example, if I wanted to visually show that this character is even more distant, I could just move it like this. And if I wanted to show that this character is more different, and more different, and I can obviously put these into these little containers and then move them if I wanted to. Now, another thing that's totally useful is the ability to export. And it takes a few tries because your, 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 your inclination is to click on this icon or to click on this icon. What this does though, is it gives you these types of different outputs. So this is a PDF standard and you'll see that it's generating a PDF. As soon as it's done, I'll pull it up in post-production. But what it does is it now gives me something that, oh, all right, you can see it right here because it is actually a Chrome browser. So you can see right here, I've just pulled this up here it is, I can email it to somebody, I can email the entire board if I want. Um, this is a very interesting one as well. Um, you can generate and download a Microsoft Word document uh, that pulls all of this together. Show you what this looks like. It's a little bit out of the screen. Give me a second. All right, didn't wanna pull. But what you can see is it's outlined everything and I can jump to anything that I want, any section that I want, and it's all in Microsoft Word, which is where I would do my primary writing. Um, I, I know there are a lot of people who like to use Google Docs, but as you know, you can take this Word document, you can upload it to Google Docs, and then uh, write directly in there. This also allows you the ability to have a lot of flexibility if you don't wanna continue operating and doing your primary authoring in Milanote, although it does have functionality to allow you to do primary authoring in this platform. 
Uh, these are all different outputs. I don't know why I can't download all the images and files. I'm not sure if it's because I'm on a, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not sure if it's because I'm on a, a demo version or there's any other reason. Quick note, there are different ways to uh, look at this. So if I had a much larger story, I could scale this out. But if I really wanted to zoom in on one particular character and take a look at what they're doing or talk about just one aspect of this or take a screenshot, uh, but boom, right back to zero uh, to 100. So one of the things I'm going to show you real quick here is a very helpful tool. So as I noted, uh, brainstorming is not actually filled out. So I'm going to delete that so that I can save some space. You can see here uh, I've gotten a little extra space on the free version. I'll probably get the paid version. Uh, it is very, very useful. So now I'm also going to take this out. Now I'm here and I wanted to just show you a few additional ways that I could use this tool. So I go over here and I create a new board. So the new board is just a blank canvas and you can change the icon, you can change the color. But in this case, I'm just gonna show you the way I'm using this. Uh, if I'm doing a project plan, I can look at different projects. Now, one of the projects uh, that uh, is one of my little side projects is working on a game. Um, one of the cool things about this is that they've really built out all of the different types of templates with examples that you might use. I can use this template and I can keep this example template, uh, this example content in here. And then I can look at different game mechanics and you can see what it does is it prompts you to fill out certain areas. What I found when I was building this was that I really did not know all of the different areas of my story quite as well as I thought I did. So what I've done uh, is taken this writing, and if you look, this was the novel plan that I showed you. Here was a character profile. Again, you can use theirs as a template and then slowly add your own uh, specifics here. You got your outline. This one, clearly I did, uh, and I was able to fix it, but you can see they show you different types of formatting options. You can see in the middle, you can see the add a docx, you can put a text document in here. You can do word formatting. You can add music. You can add movies. Uh, here's your world building, uh, which I thought is amazing because I have a very specific time and place for my story. Um, here is my story map. Once again, I, you can see I actually use this exact one, the premise, the stakes, so on and so forth. You can see when it comes out of the box, it's white, but you know, I like color. Um, the character relation map. Uh, I use this to start, uh, and you can see they have these great little curved lines and different functions. I was spending so much time playing with this that I just decided to start from scratch and build my own arrows. It, th that is one of the rabbit holes that I ran down, which was formatting. You know, every time you add an element and you circle something and then you change it in green or you add this little physical X and then you highlight it in red. That you, I'm running, I'm actually doing more playing with the formatting than I am actually working on the story. So I go back and I said, all right, I'm, I'm not going to keep playing with this. Uh, it's fun to do. Uh, as you can see, you can play with this. And again, you can keep that example content as a starting point. You'd see, I didn't change much of this. I basically kept it exactly as it was. And then I filled in the blanks because I just thought it was a very helpful guide. Um, the research area, my story will take place in a specific city uh, during a special uh, historical time period, not in the present tense. Uh, one of the things I wanted to be able to do was uh, take modern cell phone technology and tracking technology out of it so that when it's a crime story, it's not so easy to find these characters and they don't have to go through the snap a burner phone scenario. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But what I'm going to do is you can see, I can drop in a Wikipedia entry or link to a specific blog or show some images that will be helpful. Now, as I'm writing this story, obviously as a comic book creator, I'm going to want to, uh, show my co-creators some of the ideas, some of the vision that I have. That's where a mood board comes in. Now, if you've worked in a marketing or advertising agency, you're familiar with mood boards. If you're not, 
The mood board is a common tool that creatives will use to showcase what what story they essentially want to tell. What's the feeling? What's the mood you want to capture? So you can see here you have uh, colors, uh, which are very useful to show the tone of the story. That's a way to communicate with your colorist. Uh, you can show heavy shadows in this particular uh, case. This might be a romantic story where you're showing a lot of close-ups and that's the mood that you're trying to evoke. This one might be uh, very mysterious where you're uh, able to take that image and then scribble over it. It's pretty amazing when you think about all the different ways uh, that you can put a mood board together. Traditionally, mood boards have been physical in a conference room and we would cut pictures out of magazines or we would find images on the web and we would print them out and we put them on this mood board as a way of uh, showcasing where we wanted to go. I highly recommend that if you are building a comic, you use this mood board because I have done this many, many times with different creators, uh, Apocalypse Boulevard being a great example. Sometimes I would find an image and then I wanted my artist and coloring team to be able to see what I was going for. So I was sliding them into a shared folder on Google Docs. But of course, it didn't have a, a mood. It, you didn't have a visual. I, I could put it into a slide and it became such a hassle. This is such an amazing tool because I was able to see exactly how I would put this together. So as I build out Unmade Men, I am going to be using this mood board uh, to show exactly the kind of feeling I want to evoke in the story and that, and that will help the uh, the primary artist and the colorist to tell the same story together. Uh, there's this brainstorming section. Uh, I, I'm not much into this brainstorming section, uh, but I am actually going to populate it. I'm going to go through uh, every one of these um, because I want this to be a really great story. And what this is doing for me is essentially forcing me in an academic way to make sure that I've touched base on all of the different types of things that I need to do to tell a good story. One of the great things about this is um, you, can, you can pull out different types of um, boards that will guide you. And one of the things I just thought was super cool was this ability to do project plans and build out different assets that this is a character persona. Now, this is obviously built directly into the writing section, but you can see it's populated with slightly different information. If you were doing software development, which is part of what I do in my day job, you know, you might have to have an agile uh, board. You might use Jira for that, but Jira is a business tool and really not as shareable as this and not quite as visual and easy to see. So what I was really thrilled was uh, the ability to tell different types of stories and um, force me uh, this time uh, to recognize that I had not fully fleshed out all of my characters in a way that would create the best story. Uh, there are lots of other tools here that you can use, but again, if you're using the free version, it is fairly robust, but pretty quickly, you're gonna find yourself, excuse me, hold on, let me show you. You're gonna find yourself wanting to do more. And uh, that was where I was when I was playing with this. I was like, oh man, I wish I could do this and I wish I could do that. Um, I am obviously a big fan of different types of tools of this nature. Obviously I work in software, so I like playing with software. Uh, I would say the one thing that you need to do when you use something like Milanote is set a time that you're going to build this uh, and then slowly populate it, but then after a while you have to leave it alone. In my particular case, um, I can mess around with colors and arrow designs forever, but kind of uh, built into the system is this uh, limiting factor. So I'll give you an example. So I, I wanted to change the type of uh, weight there was. So there was thin, medium, which is the default, and thick, and I go like this. And then pretty soon I'm like, oh, I want this to be thicker, but unlike something like PowerPoint where I, where I can literally put in a value, that's it, you're done. The other thing is if you go back to the home, I have this, this is the square, and I was thinking, ah, cool, I wanna 
I want this to be a really big one. And then after a while, you're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go like this. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put uh, as an option. You know, they have lots that you can, you can build in here. And I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna put this as the image and then I'm done. And now I show there's no gun and I could change the color. And you can see where I'm going here because uh, if you guys know me, you know that I love to customize and play. But after a while, you can't scale the image. You can't um, move uh, things in ways that can't be moved. There's a, there's a certain structure to it. And that's kind of a good thing because at the end of the day, uh, I can easily see myself spending more time playing with the software than I am actually writing my story. Again, uh, I love the story outlining tools. It has prompted me. It showed me some gaps in my actual story. Uh, what you see here is uh, the bones of my character bios, and I realized that some of the characters either A, were not necessary, or B, were necessary but needed some additional fleshing out. Uh, you can see how certain parts of this, you can see I've, this is very raw, it's very incomplete, but this tool is a wonderful resource. Um, it is uh, like a great writing group that continues to prompt you to make sure you know your story, uh, I did not know my story as well as I thought I did, and I was able to uh, improve it with Milanote. Uh, again, this is using the free version. Uh, I found it to be super effective, but in all likelihood, I'm going to get the paid version. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this overview of tools for creators. Uh, if you're making comics, uh, I hope you continue to subscribe to Comic Book School Live. Uh, go to the comicbookschool.com website and find all of the useful resources for you to make you better at the craft and business of making comics. Uh, let me know what you think in the show notes and make sure you check out the live show because we'll be talking about this on the live show uh, when Mike Vasolo and I break down uh, what Mike thinks of the Milanote software.